everyone, welcome back to the Everyday Arcana channel. I'm Morgan Glenn, and today we're going to be talking about witches bottles. And I'm going to share with you my personal twist on how to make one without using urine or vinegar. Witches bottles were originally part of English folk tradition. Now at that time, they would not have considered these to be part of witchcraft, because for them, witchcraft was wholly evil, with the sole purpose of causing harm and destruction. So these bottles were what they did to protect against that kind of witchcraft. How a witch's bottle works is that inside of it are nails, pins, broken glass, and other sharp things that serve to tear apart the magic that is trapped inside the bottle. Inside is also a tag lock, which is something that is part of a person that ties back to that person, like sympathetic magic. So nail clippings, hair, blood, saliva, and it's all topped off with that person's urine. This also serves to tie the jar back to them and to mark it as definitely being theirs. The bottle acts as a decoy, so if magic is sent the person's way, it goes to the bottle instead, where it is trapped and destroyed. Traditionally, these bottles were placed underneath the hearth or under the stairs in the home. Urine was obviously an integral part of the witch's bottle. However, in addition to the fact that for half the population doing this the traditional way is awkward and messy at the best of times, modern people are more squeamish about dealing with the bodily fluids than people in the past were. So this has led to modern recipes that substitute vinegar for the urine. Hi there, editing me, butting in with a little important safety information. Vinegar should not be used in a witch's bottle if you're going to be using iron. The vinegar is going to break down the protective coating on the iron, and then it'll start breaking down the iron. And this can cause a gas buildup, which could conceivably cause your jar to explode. Back to the video. But I recently connected some dots that leads me to believe that vinegar is not the household cleaning fluid that should be used as a substitution for urine. Ammonia is. So let me explain how I came to that conclusion. A few months ago, I took a class on personal and home cleansing taught by Matthew Venus of Spiritus Arcanum. In that class, it's a deep dive of the many things that can be used for spiritual cleansing and protection. One of the things that he said was that ammonia is used for very heavy, very strong spiritual protection, and that some practitioners, if they see something on their property that they think someone has laid down in order to hex them, the first thing that they do is pee on it. So my thought was, that's why urine works so well in witches' bottles. It's not just something to tie the bottle to the person to mark it as their territory, but as one of the things that would destroy the magic. From there, I formulated the process that I'm going to use, and I will show you how I'm going to put it all together. The first question is going to be, when is the best time to make one of these? My answer is whenever. I don't view something like this as being spell work so much as I view it as being spiritual hygiene. So the emphasis isn't on when to do it, it's to just do it. If you want to kick it up a notch and work with the days of the week or the phase of the moon, that's perfectly fine. Uh, it's more like a protective binding than anything else, so correspond accordingly. First, we will need a jar of some type with a tight-fitting lid. I'm using this canning jar that I've had lying around for a while. So then the sharp things. I've got some nails here from a home renovation project that'll do. You can also use whatever pins, nails, broken glass, or ceramic shards that you might have. I also have my tag locks, actual locks of my hair. Nail clippings will also work, so will blood. And of course, enough ammonia to fill whatever vessel you are using. You will also need saliva, which is not pictured here for obvious reasons, because even with the tag locks, traditional witch bottles always had a way of marking them as definitely belonging to a certain person. There are two ways of doing that, urine or saliva. Mark your territory or lick something to claim it as your own. I have also primed my tag locks with a little couplet so that they know they're supposed to be acting as a decoy for harmful magic and 
only harmful magic. Okay, so we put the nails in first. And of course they want to go everywhere. Then we add the tag locks. Just kind of squish that in there. And then we fill it with the ammonia and saliva. Make sure you've got adequate ventilation for this. I'm actually going to pop outside to fill this with the ammonia, then add the saliva and put the lid on. So I will be right back. I now have a witch's bottle. Yay! So what do I do with it? A lot of people will tell you to go off somewhere and bury it far away from your property. This is not a good idea for a couple of reasons. The first being that it's littering. Literal littering. The planet has enough to deal with right now. We as witches should not be adding to the burden of trash in nature. Glass is not biodegradable. So please don't leave something that will inevitably break and become a mess of broken glass and potential tetanus for someone else to clean up or for some poor animal to walk over. Second is a witch's bottle is a shield against malefic magic. A shield only works if you have it at hand. Now, I have heard people say that that's why you bury it far away from you, because it'll act as a decoy, which, yeah, is the point, but not in that way. So that, having it far away, will work right up until the person who is cursing you adds your address to the specifications of who's getting cursed, or, you know, just drops something off on your front porch. Um, at that point, the magic is not going to go way out into the woods where you buried your witch's bottle. It's going to go to you. A shield only works if you have it at hand. And this is why the original witch's bottles were placed inside the house. Now, I'm going to put mine um, first in a plastic bag and then in a shoebox. I'm going to put that shoebox in the closet under my stairs. And every once in a while, I'll poke my head in there and make sure everything's fine, hasn't broken, isn't leaking. And if you live with other people, you can put it in your personal closet or a dresser drawer. Regardless of where you decide to put it, there are a couple of things to keep in mind. The first is that we're actually using a solution of ammonia in water. So it has the same freezing point as water. And when water freezes, it expands. If it expands, it'll burst your jar open. And then you will have to make a new one. So the second is if you put it somewhere that's hard to get to, you're going to have trouble unearthing it if you have to move. Um, I suppose you could always leave it behind for future occupants to find, but you really should take it with you. Because remember, you do have a tag lock in there, and you don't want to leave those just lying around. So here we have it, a witch's bottle that doesn't require you to pee in a jar. And most importantly, at the moment at least, doesn't require me to showcase a jar of my own urine on YouTube. <laughs> Speaking of YouTube, if you've enjoyed this video, please give it a like and subscribe to my channel if you would like to see more videos on witchcraft, candles, and incense. I'll see you next time.